From an ancient Celtic stronghold to a genius that invented modern artillery, yet also advocated for renewable energy, Bamber Castle isn't just breathtaking, it links so much fascinating history together. It was also the location of many scenes in the Netflix series The Last Kingdom, serving as the long-lost home of Uhtred of Bebenburg, torn between his Saxon and Viking past. But was Uhtred a real historical figure or a fictitious character? Who were the Celtic peoples of Bambra? And who was this Elon Musk type figure of his time? I will answer these and many other questions in this video. This is the story of Bambra Castle. First up, let's look at the Celtic origins of Bambra Castle. Well, this site was an ancient Celtic Brythonic fort known as Dinguri. Sitting on top of a volcanic rock and with great views, it's clear to see the strategic benefit of building a fort here. But what Celtic tribe built the original settlement? Well, it's thought it was a stronghold of a people known as the Gadothan, a Brythonic people that occupied the central region of Britain after the Romans left. The Gadothan were one tribe in a region that was known as the Henog Lave, or the Old North, a region that had strong connections to Wales. The people of this region would have spoke Cumbric, which is closely connected to Old Welsh. In the 6th century, Angles invaded the territory of the Gadothan and established the Kingdom of Bernicia. The first known king of Bernicia was Ida, who ruled from 547 until his death in 559. It is not fully clear to what extent the Gadothan were replaced or if they were assimilated into the new kingdom, but we know there was at least some bloodshed. A Welsh medieval poem called the A Gadothan tells the tale of the Gadothan and their allies in an epic war against the Angles at the Battle of Cat Wraith around 600 AD. The poem tells us how a force of around 300 warriors were assembled, some from as far afield as Pickland in ancient Wales. After spending a year feasting at what is now Edinburgh, they attacked Cat Wraith, thought to be Cataract in North Yorkshire. After several days of fighting against overwhelming odds, nearly all the warriors were killed. Around this time, Ethelrith, another king of Bernicia, passed the fort on to his wife, Beba, and it is from her that the early name was derived, as it was known as Bebenbar. The Kingdom of Bernicia would later merge with its neighbour, the Kingdom of Dira, to form the Kingdom of Northumbria in the 7th century, with Bambra an important stronghold. Now, given its location right on the coast, it should hardly come as a surprise that the Vikings soon arrived, and are thought to have completely destroyed the original fort in 993. The Viking period in England and the tension between Christian Anglo-Saxons and pagan Vikings was amazingly explored in the Last Kingdom Netflix series, which was inspired by a series of books called The Saxon Stories. Now let's face it, ads can be annoying. If you want ad-free content and other exclusive benefits, please consider supporting my work on Patreon. The link will be in the description below. Thank you, now on with the video. The show uses Bambra Castle for some exterior shots, although I think they built a set in Hungary for a lot of it. The main character of the show is Uhtred of Bebenburg, whose ancestral home was Bambra or Bebenburg. But was Uhtred a real character? The series of course rearranges timelines and events and adds lots of fiction, but there was a real Uhtred of Bambra, who was known as Uhtred the Bold. He was the ruler of Bambra, and from 1006 to 1016, he held the title of Elderman of Northumbria. Clearly a connected figure, he was given the hand of the daughter of King Ethelred of England in marriage. He was probably a man of action and helped defend this region against attacks from Scots in 1006. Like in the show, Uhtred had to balance the English and Scandinavian pressures throughout his life. One version of his death also sounds like something out of a TV show. The story goes that Canute, who ruled the kingdoms of England, Denmark and Norway for a period, Forced Uhtred to make a truce with him. As Uhtred met with Canute to agree the truce, Canute's men were hidden behind a curtain. Stepping out, they ambushed Uhtred, slaughtering him along with 40 of his men. There is another Uhtred connected to Bambra as well, who was the son of Edwulf the I of Bambra, who ruled in the 10th century. But Uhtred the Bold was probably the main inspiration for Uhtred in the Last Kingdom. Now what about the more modern history of Bambra Castle, and who was this genius inventor? Well, the castle was under Norman influence for a period, before the property came under the control of the reigning English monarch. If we fast forward through time, after the castle changed hands numerous times, it was finally bought by the Victorian industrialist William Armstrong in 1894, who completed some restorations on the castle. It is still owned by the Armstrong family, a good Scottish border clan name. 
William Armstrong was actually a fascinating character himself. He founded Armstrong Whitworth in 1847, a major British manufacturing company that built armaments, ships and other vehicles. After giving his gun patents to the British government, Armstrong was knighted in 1859. He is often considered the inventor of modern artillery, and invented such weapons as the Armstrong gun. He seemed to have no issue in being involved in the war industry as well. He once said, If I thought that war would be fomented, or the interest of humanity suffer by what I have done, I would greatly regret it. I have no such apprehension. It is our province, as engineers, to make the forces of matter obedient to the will of man. Those who use the means we supply must be responsible for the legitimate application. Despite being involved in designing and manufacturing weapons, he was also heavily interested in renewable energy. In collaboration with the architect Richard Norman Shaw, he built Cragside in Northumberland, the first house in the world to be lit by hydroelectricity. He once stated that coal was used wastefully and extravagantly in all its applications, and predicted in 1863 that Britain would cease to produce coal within two centuries. He was also an advocate for solar energy. Irrespective of what your thoughts on this matter are, it's interesting that he was thinking about such things 150 years ago. As we have seen, Bamburgh Castle isn't just breathtakingly beautiful, it also links so many parts of Britain's history together. But what impact did ancient migrations have on the genetics and DNA of Britain? To find out, please click here. Thanks for watching, please subscribe and hit the bell and tell your friends and family about this channel. Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below as well. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.